on Friday afternoon, Auburn University announced that they are going to retain Brian Harson, which is a strange thing to come out and say. They are not making a change. Brian Harson is the coach. And then, of course, he comes out for college game day, and apparently now he's getting everybody to call him Coach Brian, which is uh, strange in and of itself. But he was out there for the basketball game for Auburn against Texas A&M, and he was having himself a time. He put out his own statement. The university put out their statement. Harson was talking about all the people that he knows who he is and uh, what they put my family, not, not they, but what my family has gone through uh, was just putrid and awful. And, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to win as the coach here. Uh, let me ask you this. Is this going to work? Like, I understand not firing him right now because of buyouts and whatever else. Uh, I noticed that Auburn did not put out any kind of a statement from the AD. There was nothing from Alan Green at all. It, this was all uh, way up, you know, president level and the coach. Uh, did you find this a little strange, like uh, the way that it all went down? Well, I mean, is there a normal way for it to happen after everything that had happened? Let me ask that question. No, 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 no nothing okay. about this is normal. I thought, I thought this was about as normal that, as you could get. I thought this was about as professional, considering the situation, as you could get a way of handling it. They got everybody on the same page. Everybody's going in the same direction. We're all in house. We're all in this thing together, and we're going forward. And what else could you ask for, Derek? What else exactly. could you ask for? No, I, I agree with so, you. I don't know that there was a better way to handle it, right? So, so I, you know, I think I think they're okay in this. Um, I told you we looked at the schedules and we looked at the talent on Auburn's team right now. I I think Auburn, if I had to buy stock in Auburn this year, I would buy it. If I had to buy it the year after, I think I'd probably sell it. And and therein lies the problem of is do you think do you think you have a coach and an organization going in the right direction, or do you think they're going to live off of the pieces that they have in house right now? Well, I will. I will tell you this: I don't, I don't think have they're the going to compete yet. for the West. Hang on, I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> no. No, go ahead, go ahead. West, but there are people that think this team is going to completely implode. They're going to be a four and eighteen next year. Like that's just not happening. I just don't see that. I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be fine, and then it's the year after that I worry about. Yeah, yeah, I, I could, I could totally see that. Uh, I mean. What I'm curious about, like, they still don't have an offensive coordinator, and we're only a few weeks away from uh, from spring practice starting. I mean, they they have got to get something figured out pretty soon, and it wasn't Brian Har- I will tell you this. I was a little confused when Brian Harson was in, uh, you know, he, he was gone for vacation and whatnot, and I understand that. Everybody needs time away, et cetera, but he, he doesn't have an offensive coordinator. Now, at some point, I'm not expecting him because I would I would still go on vacation. I'd be like, you know what, I'm gonna figure this out when I get back. Because I, if I'm not mistaken, Brian Harson is is calling the plays, so whoever he hires as his OC is just gonna help scheme up the game plans, right? And probably be the quarterbacks coach because they don't have one of those now. They're gonna have to figure some stuff out for sure. They still got pieces that they got to round into shape, and and at least they've got the coach to do that as opposed to going through a coaching search in the middle of February. So that is certainly a step in the right direction. I just I wonder what this does to the booster faction at Auburn with the board of trustees and whatnot. The guys that uh, supposedly, reportedly, are the ones that that kind of stirred up all these rumors and were trying to get them out. Right? What what does this do? Do you really have everybody on board heading in the same direction, or are we going to have to go through this at the end of the season again? That's that's what I'm well, not that concerned all about. Well, that depends on how the season goes, Gary. Like. Uh, yeah, I like mean, if they, you win if 10 they go, games. If they go 6-6, six and six, if they go 6-6 six and six and lose the bowl game, let's say that happens, right? Let's say they go with the six-win season. Okay? And, and, and then everybody always gets fired up. You can't go back and say, well, see, they weren't ever on the same page to begin with. Like, they didn't get all this stuff announced. No. The outcome, the results of the season dictated how they reacted afterwards. If they win eight, nine games, I think the outcome's going to be fine. I think those boosters are going to be happy and they're going to shut up and they're going to get in line. And I think they all, like, I just, we're trying to predict 
how people are acting now based on how they're going to react, you know, a year from now, you know, 10 months from now. <laughs> True. Yeah, it's, it's almost impossible to see. It's almost impossible to figure out. Uh, they do have eight home games next year. So that will certainly help things. They open up with Mercer and San Jose State. Then you got Penn State, Missouri, LSU all at home. You play at Georgia in the middle of October. You play at Ole Miss immediately after that. So you got a three game stretch of LSU, Georgia, and Ole Miss. You got a week off. And then to close out, you got Arkansas at Mississippi State, AM, Western Kentucky, and then at Alabama. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. There's, there's a chance for them to, uh, Maybe reel off some wins, especially early. Uh, you get that win over Penn State, you're looking at probably four and zero before you play against LSU, and then we'll see where it goes from there. But you know, who knows what Penn State's going to look like, et cetera. It, it, there's, we'll dive into all of that I, once I, we get I there. Think, but I think if they can start off three and one, though, that puts them on a really, really good track. Yes, yes, three and one in the non-con that'll put you in a in a good position. Because while they got hard games coming up. All those teams also have flaws. True. All those teams are making huge transaction, uh, transitions also. so This is true. This is true. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.